Real Country, 1430 AM and 107.3 FM, WRDN. This is the WRDN Morning Farm Report. I'm Brian Winnikins. Joining us this morning, Matt Clority. He is with uh, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. He's the Phosphorus Implementation Coordinator. And we are going to talk about the first market-based effort in America for water quality. And uh, thank you to our newsmaker sponsors, including Wisconsin Corn Growers, Elsevier Co-op, Cannabis Silo, Animal Wellness Center of Buffalo Valley, Compure Financial Osseoplastics, Synergy Co-op, the Wisconsin Soybean Growers Association, and Wisconsin Farmers Union. And Matt, thank you for joining us today. Okay, the Water Quality Trading Clearinghouse. I guess, tell us a little bit, how did this all come about? Yeah, the Water Quality Trading Clearinghouse is a, a novel concept that will help farmers, as well as wastewater plants, uh, reduce pollution. And this is, this is a void that was um, you know, recently filled by, by the clearinghouse legislation, uh, came through the uh, Department of Administration for you know, getting the clearinghouse online. The need started back in 2010 with our phosphorus standards that set targets for surface waters. Phosphorus is the nutrient that generally causes algae blooms in lakes, and rivers, excessive plant growth. So, you know, that's, that's a big problem that has been plaguing the state for quite a while. The phosphorus standards are intended to, to remedy that. The, the standards result in really low limits for our wastewater plants to the point where, you know, they have to spend four or $5 million on a small system to, to meet those limits. And you're generally looking at doubling or tripling sewer rates in, in our communities when, when that expense is incurred. So we wanted to be flexible with how, how these limits were met. And we, when we look at where phosphorus is coming from, it's, it's not all from our wastewater plants. A lot of it comes from the landscape, right? From, from runoff from farm fields and stormwater manure and fertilizer, et cetera. So that questioned, you know, should, should we be pushing this technology heavy approach at our wastewater plants or, or can they do something else that results in as good of an environmental benefit or more? And that is, that's water quality trading. A wastewater plant can go out, work with a farmer to reduce pollution. And as long as they reduce enough pollution to make up for you know, what their wastewater plan is discharging, uh, they, they can be in compliance with their permit in that way and save that multi-million dollar expense. So with this, where they're going to be like trading credits, I guess, how is this going to work and how can farmers then take advantage of this? Because they might be doing a lot of different practices already on their, their fields, I, I, you know, from, from cover crops to you know, when they, they, they spread, they have, they have barrier strips and, and more to, to prevent phosphorus and, and groundwater contamination and that sort of thing. So how can they benefit from this? Yeah, there's, there's a, a lot of good things happening on the landscape right now that, that you mentioned. You know, I, I think there's a lot of folks who are good stewards of, of the land. Um, but, but we also see, you know, places that need improvement. And you know this this clearinghouse effort is really targeting those those areas that need improvement, but there aren't resources or, or the farmer isn't connected enough to you know take advantage of government programs or, or other incentives that would you know get buffers or cover crops on the landscape. So it's an, it's really intended to grease the wheels on getting funding to a farmer to improve land management. And those improvements, we can quantify them through the clearinghouse, and then those will be sold as credits to uh, wastewater plants who, who need to, to reduce their pollution for their permits. So, so if, if, if I'm a farmer and I, I've done some of these things, I would go to the clearinghouse and say, I have so many credits available, or, or how would that work? If you're a farmer who wants to do more, you should go to the clearinghouse. I, I, think, I think that's a message I, I want to you know, be, be clear about is, you know, the clearinghouse need, should show additionality, right? Like we're establishing more, more practices on the landscape. 
uh, because of the clearinghouse and, and because of this effort. So I, I do want to, you know, avoid like taking into account everything that was done in the past. Uh, but the, those past efforts can help uh, towards meeting just a, a baseline condition. And I won't get too into the science and policy here, but you know, there's a in some areas of the state, there's a baseline condition that has to be met. And a lot of farmers have have done work that gets them to that baseline condition to the point where now you can generate credits by doing more. So the um, you know the early adopters, uh, the, those who are already good stewards, are set up to be you know successful if if they do want to engage with the clearinghouse. I should note there's you know we we've we've seen trades around the state. We have 55 trades established pre-clearinghouse. So there's, um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, established program that, that can be pulled from as far as what's been done, what's successful in the world of trading. But really, you know, we could have several hundred of these trades occur in the state. And um, I think that's what the clearinghouse is going to promote. Talking with Matt Clarity with the uh, Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. He's the phosphorus implementation uh, coordinator and uh, talking about the uh, water quality trading clearinghouse contract that's been established here in Wisconsin. It's the first market-based effort here in America. So how are these going to be valued? I guess, is there, you know, am, am I going to have to be on my early morning farm report, you know, in, in the markets also have to do water clearinghouse contracts. Are these going to, are these going to, these credits going to be valued and traded every day or, or how is that going to work? The timing is, to some degree dependent on when the, the credit users need, need credits. And, and the, like I mentioned, those are the wastewater plants that would be buying the, the credits. So they, they are the market driver, so to speak, right? They, they're the consumer of credits. Uh, they, they may reach out to the clearinghouse and make that need known and ask the clearinghouse if, you know, if there are credits available in my watershed, can I purchase those? The clearinghouse may go look for credits where that need exists. So, you know, contacting uh, farms and and seeing what opportunities there are for for pollution reduction. So, the the need comes from the the credit users. The timing revolves around when those credit users need to meet their permits, and then the the trade accounting all happens on an online database that the clearinghouse has, has established so you you could log into this i think it's called a centralized registry you could log in online and actually see where credit users are and where credits could be generated as well so there's um you know that form of organization and communication as well we, we, we won't run it through uh, through the station here, Brian, uh, <laughs> unless you want to. So, well, that here's here's the other question I have. And you mentioned you know, the wastewater treatment plants. Okay, I'm going to use Durand and Mondovi. So Mondovi will have a brand new state-of-the-art wastewater treatment plant coming online. I think it's like $13, $14 million. It's using a lot of new type of technology from... LG and, and all kinds of different things that they're going to be using. Durand still has an older plant. Could Durand buy credits from Mondovi? Because Mondovi's plant is, is one is, is brand new, but it's, it's probably the, the way it's been designed, it's going to be even lower than what the DNR is saying for phosphorus because it has all of these new, I mean, they're, they're like, there's a greenhouse and all kinds of different things that they're putting with it. So could Durand get a credit from Mondovi? Yeah. So what you're talking about, there is a point to point trade. That's what we'd call that a one point source, a wastewater plant trading credits to another point source. What I was referencing earlier was a, a non point to point trade. So, you know, farm, farmland, stormwater, et cetera, trading to a, uh, a point source. And the scenario you laid out could happen. Yes, absolutely. A, a wastewater plant can invest in new treatment, go beyond their existing requirements, remove more pollution than they were required to, and then sell those credits to 
a downstream wastewater plant that is struggling and it might save that downstream wastewater plant and community a bundle of money. It, it all depends on you know, the reliability of that treatment plant and are, are they willing to commit to a lower limit, you know, something that would signify they're going beyond requirements. And um, yeah, some of the new treatment technology is pretty impressive. So I, I think the likelihood is, is high. And, and if, if farmers are, are wanting to find out more to, to, to be in, at least to get onto this registry and that sort of thing, how can they do that? Well, the most straightforward way is to log on to the Clearinghouse's website. It is wiclearinghouse.org, pretty simple for you, and establish an account. You can then um, look at what, uh, where the credit need is, and you can offer up potential projects on your land uh, that, that the clearinghouse could uh, come and, and fund and, and pay you for. So uh, that's, that's one way to do it. Uh, there, there's a phone number, of course. They, they, uh, I know the clearinghouse just hired a staff person, so they'll, um, you know, ha have somebody on staff to look, you know, look at your uh, land either remotely or come out and, and do a site visit, depending on, you know, their their workload, and um, you know, could potentially work towards a project in, in that manner. Finally, before we let you go, Matt, have any other states called and said, "Hey"? We heard about this and how'd you do it? <laughs> there, Wisconsin has gotten a lot of attention from other states over the years due to our, our phosphorus rules and our, our nutrient management approaches, how closely we work with agriculture to, um, <clears throat> you know, set, uh, you know, make, make sure new, good nutrient management's occurring on, on fields, right? So, so yeah, other states have looked at our trading program for years and, and thought, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. That's really where we need to move. Other states haven't had the same driver, though, that Wisconsin has had, those phosphorus rules I was talking about. So that, that has set us apart. We, we will see other states move this direction. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty certain. That is uh, Matt uh, Clardy. He's uh, with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. And you're listening to the WRDN Morning Farm Report.